Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today I'm having a look at complex numbers. And this is a bit of an introduction to complex numbers. Now, what is a complex number? Well, it's a, it's a number which is, comes from the complex number system. Uh, the complex number system is actually a superset which contains the real number system. So complex numbers are, in fact, super numbers, you might think of them like. They are made up of real bits and another part which is an imaginary part. Now, the imaginary part is created by the I. Now, the I, um, hopefully we know, uh, the I is in fact equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay. This is what makes this particular number special. Okay. Uh, it's now represented okay, on an Argen diagram or a complex number plane which is, has an imaginary axis, IMZ, and a real axis, real Z. And you can see here I've actually written Z and I've actually, we can see here, we represented z as a point. Now, I could actually give it coordinates x and y, but I normally would write a complex number as z equals x plus i y. Now, you can see here it's made up of two parts, okay, the real part x and the imaginary part i y. Now, the y is real and the x is real, but the i, when I multiply it by um, y, I create an imaginary part, and a complex number can be purely imaginary, um, and, or it can be real as well, just that, so there's no, if it's purely imaginary, there's no real part, and if it's purely real, there's no imaginary part. So basically, uh, we normally would express this complex number as, uh, you know, x plus i, y, and we can add complex numbers by adding the real parts and adding the imaginary parts and multiply them and divide them, but this is not a very convenient form. and. Um, we normally would uh, express complex numbers in what's called the polar form, okay? And uh, the polar form uh, is basically uh, related to the vector. Now, if we just draw in a vector, let's actually draw in a vector from, uh, okay, here we are. I always like to think of uh, complex numbers as vectors, actually. And uh, so if I actually attach them to the origin, they are called position vectors. And um, the idea is that, uh, the vector, uh, OZ, if you like, would actually have a length, we'd call R, and it would form an angle, uh, which would be theta. So, and this is the property of vectors. Vectors actually have lengths and angles. They're like little arrows, I suppose, uh, you can think of them like. And I can represent, I can actually represent that particular vector by, I can actually, okay, if I just grab hold of it, here it is, and I move it. This is the same representation of the vector over there. I mean, I could put the vector anywhere. Okay, so that particular vector is a representation of this uh, complex number z. But f at the moment, I've actually attached it to the origin. Okay, and it's called, as I said, a position vector. Now, how do I write this uh, complex number in uh, polar form? Well, I look at uh, the angle, and I can see that Basically, if I resolve R, that length, down onto the real axis, okay, so let's have a look. I have to resolve it down this way, going through the angle, okay. Um, okay, well, let's uh, resolve this R through the angle theta. Um, if we think of this, uh, let's have a look. This would be uh, the Y, and this would be the X. So I could say that, what, the... Uh, the sine of theta is uh, y on r, therefore y is equal to r sine theta. Okay, if we do the same thing uh, for the x down on the real part, we can get, hopefully, you can see that's the cosine of theta, so we end up getting uh, x is equal to r cos theta. Now we put that into uh, z is equal to x, which is uh, r cos theta plus i times r sine theta. And we take a com factor of r out of r, and we write this as r. Now, we've got cos theta plus i sine theta. That's abbreviated to cis theta. Okay, so we can say z is equal to r cis theta. Now, what is r? Well, r, you can see here, is in fact the length of the complex number, and it's given a name called the modulus. So, in fact, R is equal to the modulus of Z, or the absolute value of Z. It's equal to what, the square root of X squared plus Y squared. That's from Pythagoras. 
Now, how about theta? What is theta? Well, theta is actually uh, given a name called the argument. It's called arg of z. But it's actually equal to the inverse tan of what tan? y over x. Okay, okay so that's given uh, a name, theta. It's called arg z. And r is called the mod of z, or its uh, length, if you like. So basically, the, the vector OZ is now inclined at an angle theta and has a length of R. Now, Euler actually came up with a very amazing uh, idea, and that really that E to the I theta was equal to cis theta. So this enabled us to actually write uh, complex numbers as in another form, if you like, in a, a a polar exponential form, and I can always write z now. I can also say z. z is equal to, uh, if you like, r, and then it's uh, e to the i theta. Now that's the polar exponential form of a complex number. And uh, basically, uh, the very, there's a very famous result, uh, Euler's formula, if you like, that. Uh, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Now this is a very, very famous uh, formula here. You can see relating e i pi 1 and a 0. That was called Euler's formula. Okay, so, but uh, just while we're on this, there's a couple of things about arguments and uh, the ambiguity of the argument, which we're going to be able to use to find the roots of complex numbers. But mostly, um, we say the principal argument, uh, sometimes written with a big arg, big arg is it, okay, uh, lies between minus pi and pi. So we normally say that the principal argument is in that particular uh, range of values. For, uh, and we always say, uh, okay, when we quote a complex number, we normally try and put the principal argument in first. But there is... Um, a bit about this ambiguity of a complex number. I'll just show you quickly. Okay, if I actually increase my uh, angle by 2 pi, right, so I go right around again here, so I go round once completely. Okay, so what I would do uh, then, I'd actually be um, adding in 2 pi to my argument here. And uh, this would be the same complex number. Okay, uh, so there is something that does exist, which is called the ambiguity of a complex number in terms of the argument. If I and, uh, okay, well, let's have a quick look at a uh, quick example. Here I've got uh, z is equal to 2 plus 2 root 3i. We're just going to try and express this in the, the different forms. First of all, uh, what is the modulus of z, or if you like, r? So let's have a quick look. What would r be? Well, we know that r... So which is equal to mod z, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's going to be 2 squared plus 2 root 3 all squared. And that's going to just be, uh, what's that? 4 and 12 square root 16. So that's just going to be equal to 4. So we know r is equal to 4. How about the theta? Now theta, uh, okay, theta is, um, theta, uh, is arg of z. So arg of z. Uh, which is theta, is equal to uh, tan inverse of, uh, what's that, 2 root 3 on 2, which is the inverse tan of root 3. Now, the inverse tan of root 3 is inverse tan of 60 degrees, which in radians, we normally put the argument in radians, which would, 60 is just pi on 3. Okay, so the angle would be pi on 3. So, in its different forms, okay, 2 plus 2 root 3 i can be written as z is equal to, in r cis theta or polar form, I'd write it as 4, uh, okay, dropping the cos plus i sign to cis, and the angle theta would be pi on 3, okay. How about in polar exponential form? Uh, I would write that as, uh, in polar exponential form, z is equal to 4e to the i theta, which would just be pi on 3. Now, uh, 
Concerning the ambiguity here of that particular complex number, now if I go around once, let's go around once. Okay, go around once. Okay, I've added, uh, you can see here, 2 pi to my, so I add 2 pi to my uh, argument plus 2 pi. You can see here that, in fact, this has now created, uh, well, a complex number of another form, if you like. Uh, and, uh, but we normally state, you know, uh, from our normal theory in complex numbers that the, we always quote the principal argument, okay? So um, it's, we always, always would say, uh, okay, that, as you know, arg of z, okay, is between, as you see, you know, minus pi and pi. Now, so as it stands, it's in principal argument form, okay? Well, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll go on to some more exercises next time. Thank you. Bye.